Now let's make things more complicated. Say we draw a rectangle as before only if the value of s is smaller or equal to 10 and we'll always draw a circle regardless of the value of s. The code for this looks something like this. In here, the ellipse statement is executed regardless of the results of the test statement inside the if. So in our future programs, we must ensure that the statements are included in the if statements where needed and excluded where not. This is the very important role of the curly brackets. Let's take this one step further. Say we drew a traffic light like this, where the top circle represents the red light, the middle circle represents the yellow light, and the bottom circle represents the green light. If we drew them all filled, the code will look like this. And all the traffic lights will be lit up. Instead, let's draw only the red light as filled and the rest gray if s is equal to 1, and the yellow light as filled and the rest gray otherwise. The flowchart for this would look like this. And the code for this flowchart is structured around an if statement, followed by an else statement after the curly bracket, like this. So for us, a pseudocode for drawing the traffic light will look like this. The actual code looks like this. Let's try to play with this for a while by giving s various values. Looking at our flowchart, what would happen if the value of s is 2? That's right, the yellow light should be drawn. Let's see if the code compiles. What about if the value of s is 3? That's right, again, the yellow light should be drawn. Let's see if the code complies. 